All right, so today I'm going to talk about five ways that you can make money as a developer. So it's probably no surprise to anyone that's been following my channel, but I'm all about that side hustle life, the multiple streams of income life. And so I wanted to talk about a few different ways, if you have software development skills, that you could go about finding different ways to make money other than a nine to five. And for each of these ways, I have a person as an example who I think has implemented this really well, as well as a rating of how difficult I think it is. And these ratings instead of stars are going to be shovels. So the more shovels there are, the harder it's going to be from one to five. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the first way I have for you to make money as a developer other than your nine to five is info products. So that could be courses or eBooks or anything kind of in that realm. There's a lot of different ways to capitalize on your knowledge through info products. So you could do a course maybe on a specific technology or you could write an eBook, even if it's something really short on another specific technology or maybe soft skills. It really could be anything, but info products are a great way to share what you know as a software developer. A few people I think have done really, really well here. Number one, Wes Boss. I've talked about him before. He does premium JavaScript courses, and I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say that he's making millions of dollars a year through his courses on his own course platform that he built. So he's kind of an extreme example both because of the amount of money he's making and also the amount of work he's put into not only the courses, but having his own fully built platform that he built himself with maximum control. So he's a little bit of an enigma in that sense. Someone else I think is doing really well here is Daniel Vassallo. I've talked about Daniel on my channel before. I even took one of his courses and he just crossed $500,000 lifetime revenue from Gumroad, which is the platform that he uses to host his info product. So he has a book on AWS, which is on Gumroad, as well as a Twitter course and a live cohort-based course about his approach to business, which I just took. So you can see between Daniel and Wes, there's a lot of money to be made, but that brings up the question of how hard is this to do? So it's a little bit hard to say and hard to rate because it's easy to put stuff up on the internet, right? So if you take Gumroad as an example, like Daniel, all you have to have is something to sell and you can upload it and start selling it immediately. So from that perspective, it's pretty easy, but it's hard to make a living off of that kind of thing, right? It's hard to get even, you know, a thousand, ten thousand dollars worth of sales. I know I myself have something up on Gumroad and I think I've made maybe two hundred dollars. And so the hard part isn't writing and doing the thing and uploading it. The hard part is getting eyeballs on your product in order to make sales. So for that reason, I'm going to rate this three out of five shovels in terms of difficulty because you basically need a pre-existing audience in order to make any significant amount of money here. Okay, our second way to make money as a developer is through open source projects. So for those of you who don't know, open source is basically free software. So this is software that is free and open and available where the source is also available online. And a lot of times open source projects that are popular tend to have a lot of people that not only rely on them, but also contribute to them. And if a lot of people rely on this project and if companies rely on this project, then the odds are pretty good that the companies will be interested in supporting the people who maintain these projects. And a lot of times that support will be financial. So that is kind of the path to making money through open source software. Number one, you have to have a project that people like and use. And number two, they have to care enough about it to be able to support it and support you. So my example of someone who's done really well here is this guy named Caleb Porzio. Caleb is a creator of Alpine.js and also Livewire, which is a framework for Laravel. And he wrote a blog post about a year and a half ago about how he hit a hundred grand a year on GitHub sponsorships, which is GitHub's sponsorship feature where you're able to give money to people who maintain certain open source projects. So this kind of seems like the dream getting paid to write software and a lot of times indie software, or I guess in this case, open source by people that are using it, that appreciate you and kind of having that direct relationship with users and an audience. But the question is, how hard is it to do? And for this, I think it's actually pretty hard to do what I mentioned, having a popular project and having people that are willing to support you because they care about it so much and are so grateful. I think that is really pretty rare and pretty hard. So I'm gonna give this four shovels out of five. If you're looking for low hanging fruit, open source may not be your best bet, 
But if you're interested in that kind of thing, then I say go for it. But just keep in mind, I think this is gonna be pretty tough. Okay, the third way to make money as a developer is through YouTube. And the way that most YouTubers make money is through Google AdSense. So those are the ads that play usually before you watch a video, sometimes in the middle, sometimes at the end. And Google pays the creator just a few cents for each play of those. And so you need a lot of views to be able to make a living off of that. But of course, creators also sell merch and have Patreon and all the other kinds of ways that you can monetize creating for a living. One of my favorite examples of a developer who's done this is Mayuko. Mayuko used to be an iOS engineer at Patreon and Netflix, and she left her job, I think about a year ago, to focus on creating full-time. And she makes really heartfelt videos, videos that emphasize work-life balance and taking care of yourself. And I just really appreciate her. I'll link her channel down below. If that sounds interesting, go and check her out, subscribe to her. But I think she's done a really interesting job as far as using this to make money and not only make money, but to be her full-time living. She's monetized in a few different ways that I didn't even mention, like brand deals. And she also has merch that you can buy through her channel. She has paid videos on her YouTube channel, which is something pretty rare that I haven't seen that much of, but YouTube does have that feature available. So the point is there's a lot of ways to monetize on YouTube, but the question we want to answer is how accessible is it how hard is it and it's kind of a similar struggle as with the whole info product thing right like it's not that difficult to create something and upload it but the question is how many people are going to watch it or how many people are going to buy it so as with info products it helps if you already have an audience but for a lot of people being on YouTube is where they're creating their audience so because of that I'm going to give this four shovels out of five I can tell you from personal experience, it takes a long time to be able to even start getting AdSense on your channel. Like for example, with me, I've been doing this really consistently this year, two videos a week, and my channel isn't monetized yet. And so it's just very, very long and pretty hard at the beginning. Like this is not a get rich quick scheme. And so for that reason, I'm gonna give it that four out of five rating. And I think the gains really tend to compound later on with that kind of thing, as with a lot of things in life. And so it's really not the lowest hanging fruit, like I said. So four out of five. All right, our next strategy for making money is to create a SaaS. Now, for those who don't know, SaaS stands for software as a service. So that could be like a web app where people pay a fee in order to access the software. This is a lot of things that you probably know of. So for example, Dropbox is a software as a service. You are paying them in order to access their software and to a certain extent their storage and you get all these features and that's kind of the exchange. Now for a lot of developers, this is essentially the holy grail. When people talk about different ways of making money, a lot of times they're talking about SaaS and that is for a few different reasons. Number one, you're basically getting paid to build software, which is what we love to do, so that makes sense. Number two, you're getting recurring revenue, which is really the holy grail when it comes to doing these online activities that make money. Recurring revenue, monthly recurring revenue, MRR is king. That's for a few different reasons, but if you're trying to make a living doing this, it's really helpful to have monthly recurring revenue because it allows you to predict what your income is going to be and it helps you to plan a little bit better. I think the third reason why people like this is it's a little bit passive, right? Like you can build something once and charge for it infinitely. And so it has no marginal cost of replication. So it's not like you're making a water bottle or something, something in e-commerce that you have to have costs to make the thing every time. You basically have just built the software once and you in theory could sell it infinitely. And that is really attractive for developers. There's a ton of examples of people who have done this really well, but the first person that came to mind for me is this guy, Arvid Call. Arvid built this SaaS called Feedback Panda, which had templates for people that had to fill out reports for teaching students English in China. It was a problem that he noticed because his girlfriend or wife was teaching students English in China and she was having to do the same reports over and over again. So they built this SaaS and they eventually sold it. But there's tons of other examples of people who have done stuff like this. My favorite resource for finding those stories is IndieHackers.com. It's part of the reason why I am making this video and am thinking about making money online at all. And I highly recommend you check it out if that sounds interesting. So let's talk about how hard this is. I mentioned SaaS is kind of the holy grail. And so I think it should follow that this is 
probably the hardest one to do because you're not only having to build the software, but you're also in theory having to market it and sell it unless it kind of markets itself, but that is really rare. And so the kind of person that could do this all on their own is also pretty rare. And this is what everyone wants, right? The monthly recurring revenue, like I mentioned, and somewhat passivity of it. Like the fact that your income could scale exponentially relative to your effort. People love that, people want that, but it's really hard to do as a result. Not anybody can do it. And so I'm going to give it five shovels out of five. I think this is by far the hardest one to get right and to succeed in. And so if this is you and you wanna do it, I would just say go in with eyes wide open and just know that it's probably gonna be pretty difficult. Okay, our last way to make money as a developer that I'm gonna talk about today is mentoring. So mentoring is kind of what it sounds like, right? I think there are a ton of people out there that wanna learn how to code and are unsure of how to do so. There are a lot of people that are junior developers that wanna become senior developers. There are people that are just stuck on a coding problem and need help. And if you have coding knowledge, then you can leverage that knowledge and help people with it. There a lot of people out there doing this right you know helping people in exchange for getting paid a little bit i've talked in the past on my channel about mentor crews and sites like it where you can hire somebody for an hourly rate to get help with something and i think that's great as far as an example of someone doing this goes i'm going to be a little bit selfish and plug myself i'm trying to spin up my mentorship side of things a little bit more and i'm doing that on Superpeer, which is a cool platform that allows you to do webinars and coaching and a whole bunch of other stuff. So if you're interested in maybe getting some one-on-one -on -one time with me, then feel free to look at the link below. It's in the description. It's just superpeer.com slash my name. And you can get on there and maybe book some one-on-one -on -one time. And I'm happy to share my knowledge and do my best to be helpful like I do in these videos. So if that sounds interesting, then I'll see you there. Let's talk about the difficulty here in case you're interested in doing something similar. I don't think it's that hard, like I mentioned, because of platforms, you know, like Gumroad with info products, they make it very easy. Superpeer with mentoring, they make it very easy. But the hard part about doing these things and actually making money is, like I've been saying, you need eyeballs. And you also need the knowledge, but I'm kind of assuming that you have the knowledge already since this video is targeted at developers but anyway how hard is this so I think you need the eyeballs like I mentioned and so because of that I'm going to give this two shovels out of five I was tempted to give it one shovel out of five because I think it's probably the most straightforward you don't even necessarily have to create anything first but in order for it to work I think you do need some eyeballs like I mentioned you need an audience so I'm going to go with two shovels out of five for mentoring online so those are five ways of making money online as a developer let me know what you think if you think there are other ways that are good but regardless, I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching to the end. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment. So consider subscribing. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.